Oh, hey, it's me, Chris. For the last 15 years, I've been making a living, drawing pictures and making stuff on my own, without a boss. Hey, nobody cares. Get back to work. Except for him. To be honest, he kind of sucks. Last year and nearly every year since I've gone full-time freelance, I've earned six figures. Oh boy, somebody's a big shot businessman. Brag much? I'm not saying it to brag. I just think it's important to share that being an illustrator doesn't have to mean struggling. At least financially. Wait, what the that, that's over a million dollars. Where did it all go? And I think to make this information helpful for you, we should go into all the little details about how I got here and all the different ways that I make my living. If you didn't know, I started my career as a graphic designer back in 2005. In 2007, I started a daily drawing project where I posted a new one online each day, every day. After about a year, I started getting commissions based on those drawings. And the more drawings I did, the more projects I got. At the end of 2009, the economy crashed, I lost my design job, and I took this as an opportunity to try to go all in on illustration. <laughs> Not like you had any other options. It was definitely a slow start, but the daily drawing project helped me to keep building momentum. To offset slow periods, I started trying to build other sources of revenue through some online classes that I made, as well as teaching a class as an adjunct professor at a local university. I also set up an online shop to sell prints, stickers, shirts, zines, other stuff. Just like everything else, these were slow builds and really took some time to start paying off. Now, 15 years later, I've worked with more than a handful of dream clients like Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, Adidas, Lego, and countless others. If I'm being honest, it still kind of feels too good to be true. Probably because it is. I've also published three books of my daily drawings. I started this YouTube channel, and I've also become a top teacher on Skillshare. Oh. All that said, my career certainly was not an overnight success. I posted daily drawings for 14 years. Do you know how many drawings that is? How many drawings is Hold it? Hold on, I'm trying to count. So this one has a thousand. Oh, and then this one has a thousand more. Oh, but then there's also this one with the 10 years of daily drawings. So many. But this one's back in 2018 and you did them until- So many drawings. Unfortunately, I won't be able to give you any secret formula for success. <laughs> but I will be able to give you a little sneak peek, a little, little look behind the curtain of my illustration and now content creation business and give you some actual data some actual numbers. Does that sound good? No. As 2023 progressed, my YouTube channel started playing a more impactful role in my overall income, which is not something that I expected when I started it a year and a half ago. Because this change became more prominent halfway through the year, I thought it might make more sense to take some averages and break it down into monthly income. And that makes sense too, because we pay our bills monthly, right? This chart breaks down my current monthly income between my- Full chart, nerd. What is this, math class? Illustration work and my content creation stuff. I'm calling the other section content creation as opposed to just YouTube because it's not all just YouTube specific, but it's YouTube related and it's more importantly not my freelance illustration work. So we're gonna go with it. The biggest piece of this pizza pie is YouTube ads, which is surprising to me because I always heard that YouTube ads were the least significant income source as a, a YouTuber. But maybe that's just because I'm a new channel and just starting out. This slice is earning an average of $1,600 per month. Coming in second by just $50 is my shop. Now you may be thinking, hey, a shop is not content creation. And while I agree with you, I have to say, before I started my YouTube channel, sales in my shop were pretty stagnant. One of my favorite things about this YouTube channel is just the amazing community that I found here and just how supportive my viewers are, like you. You're the best. Love you. Thank you. But seriously though, my audience on here is so much more supportive than any that I've ever had on any other social media platform. The third biggest slice of cheese is affiliate links. This is a combination of Amazon links, Retro Supply Co., Astropad, some iPad stands that I've reviewed, and just, you know, a few other things all combined together. If you don't know what affiliate links are, these are just commissions that I get from when people purchase things via my links. It's a great way to support the channel. There's links below. They're affiliate links for the most part. Doesn't cost you anything, but the companies pay me a little bit when you buy something. This category currently brings in around 875 per month. Number four is Skillshare. So I have eight classes on Skillshare, but some of them are pretty old, pretty dated, and I'm not sure if they're getting much action. But currently Skillshare earns me around $800 per month. Number five is my wonderful channel members. This brings in around $600 per month with 109 channel members. Thank you, channel members. Couldn't do it without you. The last category is sponsored videos. Now I'm told that 
these are usually a much more lucrative income stream for a YouTube channel than YouTube ads. But because my channel is so new, I've only had a handful of sponsored videos. So when I divided this by 12 to get an average, it only came out to about 135. That said, for my channel and my size, the sponsored videos I've had have been about four to $500 per video for a little spot in there. I don't know if that is a good or bad number because this is all new to me. So maybe you're a big YouTuber and you look at that and you go, oh, you're getting screwed. Well, I'm still learning, so maybe I'm doing good. Who knows, who knows? Okay, so let's move on to the bread and butter, which is my illustration career. Last year, I had roughly 25 projects and I've broken them down into category to sort of give you a feel for the kinds of projects that I, that I did. Three of these projects were editorial. One of the projects was packaging and a little bit of branding. I had seven advertising projects. One of them was more traditional advertising, which was some animated spots for TV. And the other six were social media based advertising, meaning content created for a brand to be used in their ads on social media. Two of those projects were for the entertainment industry. One of them was some character designs and one of them was some concept art for uh, TV show intro graphics. Two of those projects were publishing based. There were some illustrations for a book and then some lettering for a book title. And then I have an other category. And in that other category was my collaboration with the skate brand Create Originals where I did some custom engraved graphics and shirts and uh, sticker sheets, some other merch to go along with those graphic frames. I did a special artist series product for a brand, big brand, that's not out yet, so I can't tell you what it is. And then I painted a bicycle frame to be auctioned off in support of You Are Not Alone, which is a mental health awareness organization based out of New York. So that's a non-traditional kind of project. And then I created artwork for some sketchbooks that the Hartford Art School's illustration MFA program was using to promote the program and give to current and prospective students. I think an important thing to focus on here is that the illustration work that I'm doing is for all these different categories of illustration. And I think that is really key to a successful long career in illustration. I think when you try to focus on one specific category, like all editorial or all publishing. It can be a little bit tricky. There can be more periods of slowness because the, you know the industries have their ups and downs. There's big changes uh, that happen all the time. For example, big changes happened in editorial a while back where things were less print-based. Doing a lot of different things is really beneficial and keeps things it keeps income streams more well-rounded. The other thing to consider is there's vastly different amounts that you can earn per industry. For example, editorial work pays notoriously low, uh, as well as the publishing industry, there's not a lot of money there. But in advertising, the budgets are, are much, much bigger because you're working with these big brands. Even a, a simple illustration done for a social media advertising campaign could pay 10 times as much as a illustration for an editorial assignment. So having these sort of things, you could do one advertising project that would make up for months of other kind of work. So having a diverse range of projects, super helpful. Also keeps things interesting. You're not doing the same thing all the time. It's always something new. I like that. So I know this isn't a step-by-step -step plan for how to make it as an illustrator or a content creator, but I hope getting this sneak peek for what's working for me is helpful for you and maybe gives you a more realistic view of what's possible. All right, good talk, thank you. And hey, while you're here, check out this other video so you can find out everything I learned from doing 14 years of daily drawings without having to do them yourself. Seems like a win-win if you ask me.